This video is sponsored by Longevity Technology. So hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we're going to talk all about sirtuin 6 and why it's called the longevity sirtuin. So first we'll introduce the basics of sirtuins, where you can find them in a cell and what their cellular activities are. And then we'll look at a series of studies that have shown a link between sirtuin 6 activity and lifespan in different muscle organisms. And then that will nicely lead us on to looking at sirtuin 6 activators and why there's currently a lot of interest around finding molecules that can activate sirtuin 6. And so we'll discuss that at the end of the video. But firstly, what are sirtuins? Well, sirtuins are considered a family because in mammals, including us, we have seven different sirtuins, which are conveniently called sirtuin 1 to sirtuin 7. And the reason that they are a family is because these proteins all share an enzymatic domain, but they have different tiers at either end of their protein sequence that recruits them to different parts of a cell and influences what other proteins and molecules they interact with. And so the different sirtuins are structurally related, but they can perform different functions within a cell. Although for some of them, their activities do overlap slightly. So what are their activities? Well, sirtuins are NAD plus dependent enzymes. So what that means is that their enzymatic activity depends on the availability of NAD plus, standing for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And NAD plus is a really important cofactor that's found within cells. So with the availability of NAD plus, sirtuins can carry out protein deacylation, which is the removal of acyl groups from different proteins. And they also possess mono ADP ribosyl transferase activities. And so you don't really have to understand what either of that means, but basically they have the ability to modify what marks are present on different proteins. And by modifying these marks, it can affect the stability, localization, and activity of a variety of different proteins. And so this is where the different sirtuins vary because due to their different structural differences, they interact with different proteins. And this is also influenced by their cellular localization, as they'll only be able to interact with proteins that are localized in the same area. And so out of the seven sirtuins, sirtuin 1, 6 and 7 are primarily found within the nucleus of the cell, so where the DNA is found, whilst sirtuin 3, 4 and 5 are found in the mitochondria, and sirtuin 2 is mainly in the cytoplasm. And so even though sirtuin 1 and sirtuin 6 are both found in the nucleus, they're not tripping over each other's toes because they have different binding affinities to different proteins. And the reason I pick on sirtuin 1 and sirtuin 6 is because this helps to segue into looking at longevity research in connection with sirtuins. Because if we go back to 1999... When a study came out that showed that yeast lifespan was extended by 30% when it had an extra copy of a gene known as SIR2, and this was thought to be achieved by stabilising the yeast genome, hinting at its activity being localised in the nucleus. And so if you didn't guess by the name, the yeast SIR2 is a homologue of the mammalian sirtuins. And so that raised the question of, well, what would happen if you had additional copies of mammalian sirtuins? Well, studies have been done to investigate this, and one thing that's worth mentioning is that sirtuin 1 and sirtuin 6 protein levels have been shown to increase upon dietary restriction and fasting in various mouse tissues and human cell lines, with dietary restriction still being one of the most consistently seen interventions that can extend lifespan in a variety of different muscle organisms. But more interestingly, mouse models have been made whereby they can actually overexpress different sirtuins. And so when there was whole body sirtuin 1 overexpression in mice, they found that it improved several parameters reflecting health span, but it didn't seem to extend lifespan. However, other studies have shown that overexpression of sirt 1 just in the brain of mice did show a lifespan increase. And there's still interest surrounding sirtuin 1 activators such as resveratrol, terastilbene and other sirtuin activating compounds known as stacks that do show benefits to enhancing sirtuin 1 activity. But I said in this video we we're going to talk about sirtuin 6. So what happens if you have additional sirtuin 6? Well, that's been done in mice as well, and a Nature paper that came out in 2012 showed that overexpression of sirtuin 6 in mice 
and so this is whole body overexpression. It was found to extend the male lifespan, but not the female lifespan. And in this early study, they also found that the male mice that had overexpression of CERT1 had reduced levels of IGF1. And so IGF1 is a major growth factor responsible for stimulating growth in different cell types. Anyway, differences weren't seen in the females, and whilst to some extent it's thought that females have lower levels of IGF-1 compared to males, they also found a lot of differences in liver gene expression between male and female mice. Anyway, despite the sex-dependent differences observed in this study, a paper that came out earlier this year has shown that CERT6 overexpression in a different mouse strain did extend lifespan in both males and females. And you can see that in this figure here, whereby it led to an extension in median lifespan of 27% in the males and 15% in the females. And you can also see in this study that they also had overexpression of CERT1, which in cooperation with the earlier study, was shown here to not extend the lifespan of the mice. And further support from that comes from the fact that when you overexpress both sirtuin 6 and sirtuin one there isn't any enhanced benefits and that it overlaps with sirtuin 6 overexpression alone. But the curious thing is why in this paper they did see a lifespan extension in the females, whilst the previous study didn't. Well, one explanation that the authors give is that this time they did see a reduction in the IGF-1 levels in the females at old age, when they were overexpressing sirtuin 6, which in the previous study, they didn't see any change. However, sirtuin 6 overexpression had a milder effect in the females in a variety of other parameters that were looked at in this more recent paper. For example, the treadmill endurance benefits and changes in the liver transcriptional profile showed milder changes in the females than the males. And so if we put the information from both studies together, it does suggest that the female benefit is less than in the males. But why that is the case still does seem a little bit unclear. But it emphasises as well how important it is to repeat studies in different mouse models because evidently things can vary. And this is one of the reasons why translating data from mice to humans is also such a challenge. Now, the other interesting thing to mention about this paper is that they showed that sirtuin 6 overexpression helped to restore energy homeostasis. And to some extent, that isn't surprising because sirtuin activity is dependent on NAD+, and NAD is often referred to as a metabolic sensor. The abundance of NAD varies depending on the energy status of a cell. And so what they show in this paper is that in the mice that had overexpression of CERT2 and 6, they found that there was increased mitochondrial biogenesis in the liver, and this was correlated with higher expression of the gene PGC1-alpha, which regulates the expression of genes involved in mitochondrial biogenesis. I realise this isn't the clearest of figures, but the green bars show mice overexpressing CERT2 and 6, and the blue show the control mice, with the first two bars being young mice and the last two bars being old mice. And so you can see that there's an increase between the old sirtuin overexpressing and, and the old control mice. And so this work fits in nicely with the previous studies showing that sirtuin 6 levels increase under fasting. But sirtuin 6 doesn't just seem to be involved in metabolism, it also plays a critical role in the response to DNA damage. And interestingly, a very nice study came out that found a positive correlation between sirtuin 6 ability to repair DNA and lifespan in different rodents, whereby rodents that live longer seem to have more efficient sirtuin 6 enzymes that can repair DNA damage. And so these different rodent species have slight variations in their sirtuin 6 protein sequence, and that causes differences in sirtuin 6 activity. And what they seem to suggest is that, is that that could be contributing to the differences seen in their maximal lifespan. Now, one of the things that I thought was quite interesting about this paper is that when they compared the activity of the, the mouse sirtuin 6 and the beaver sirtuin 6, so the mouse being weaker than the beaver, which corresponds with the beavers having a longer lifespan than the mice, was that there was a much stronger increase in the beavers' sirtuin 6 activity of mono-ADP ribosylation as opposed to the protein deacetylation, suggesting that this mono-ADP ribosylation activity is more strongly involved in the DNA repair function of sirtuin 6. And the reason I thought it'd be interesting to mention that is because this brings us on to the last point, which is 
other ways of actually being able to activate sirtuin 6 without having to overexpress the gene. Now, activators tend to be less common than inhibitors of enzyme activity. And that's partly because for an inhibitor, the rationale is that you just have to block the binding site of the substrate, which um, without getting too biochemical, is easier to do based on structural models than to find activators. Besides the point, there has actually been some studies that have found so-called allosteric activators, also 2 and 6. And so allosteric refers to the fact that these compounds are binding to so 2 and 6 in a different location to where the substrate would bind. And so by binding elsewhere, it can alter the conformation of the protein and hopefully activate the protein. And so in this study, they identified the compound MDL800 that could activate sirtuin 6 deacetylation by increasing the binding affinity of sirtuin 6 to acetylated substrates. Now, the interesting thing with this study is that we actually have some in vivo data in mice, whereby injection of MDL800 to the mice reduced tumor growth in a xenograft model. Whereas all other proposed sirtuin 6 activators so far have only been examined in vitro, and more on from that, no sirtuin 6 activator so far has been shown to have any connection with lifespan extension or healthspan extension. But going back to what I was saying about the deacetylation activity versus the mono ADP ribosylation activity, is that this MDL800 seems to only activate the acetylation activity, not the ADP ribosylation activity. And so based on the work from the other study showing that the ADP ribosylation activity might be more important for DNA repair, it would therefore be interesting to find compounds that might preferentially activate this ADP ribosylation activity. But um, besides me getting a two biochemical again, what can we conclude from this video? Well, sirtuin 6 is evidently involved in a variety of different cellular processes, and that's partly due to the fact that it can influence the activity of many different proteins. The involvement of sirtuin 6 in the repair of DNA damage seems like one of the more important functions, especially tied with its longevity connection, but it can't be avoided that sirtuin 6 can also influence metabolism within a cell. It will be interesting to see if sirtuin 6 activators can be identified, and more on from that, shown to have benefits in health span and lifespan, but this would require in vivo models, probably done in mice, to really evaluate the efficacy. It would also be interesting to see how the sirtuin 6 activators might work in combination with mechanisms of increasing NAD plus levels, since sirtuin 6 evidently needs NAD plus, and so it is likely that they would synergize together. But I think it's clear from the work so far that sirtuin 6 can be considered the longevity sirtuin, given the lifespan extension seen in these mouse models when they overexpress sirtuin 6 albeit the sex-dependent differences are definitely very interesting. And the identification of safe and tolerable compounds that can activate sirtuin 6 would definitely be exciting in terms of its potential to delay the onset of different age-related diseases or even ageing itself. So with that, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this week's video, Longevity Technology, for which I'm very grateful. Longevity Technology delivers high-quality daily news and insights on research, investments, and technologies that extend health span and lifespan. Find the link to their website in the description. So I hope you've learned something in this video and learned a lot more about said 2 and 6 without me getting too biochemical, but um, I can't help it. So thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.